There's so many ways he was communicating with them, but they missed it. You know, I think in our despair, and I think in our confusing times of life, have you had a few? Have you had a few times when you're disillusioned? Have, have you had a time when you got disappointed in yourself? Disappointed in yourself. I mean, I don't need anybody else to help me get disappointed. I can just be disappointed all day long in myself. Here's the, here's the steps. When I get disappointed, I get discouraged. And when I get discouraged, I can get depressed. I get depressed, I can get despondent. I can go into despair and, and just go further down. You with me? Just disappointed in yourself. But if I reflect on myself without the revelation of what God says about who I am in Christ, and if you reflect on yourself without the revelation of the Word of God that you are created in His image, and if you reflect on yourself without the revelation that you are loved, and if you reflect on your situation without the hope of the gospel, then you'll be in despair. But if you reflect on your situation in light of the revelation of the word of God, and since he came forth from the grave and they found it even so, then what you'll find is whatever it is else in life that you want to throw into that equation, if it's sin, then you'll find it that sin is just like Jesus said it would be, binding. But you also find it to be so that he is liberating and can free you from your sin. You'll find forgiveness just like Jesus said. Is this making sense? The women, they found it just like Jesus said. The men, fortunately, listening to the women... There's a chance, ladies, for you to say amen. <laughs> amen right there. They listened to the ladies and found it even so. They found it just like the women said it was. But it wasn't because it's what the women said, but ultimately it's because that's backed up because of what Jesus said. So what I'm saying to you is that they found it even so, ultimately traced back because Jesus said it would be so. And if Jesus was true about the, re the resurrection, then what we read about heaven, someday we'll find even so. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. That's what he said. That's what he said. Now, if he didn't rise again, doesn't matter what he said. But it's since he did rise again, we'll find heaven just like Jesus said it would be. Some of you that have had a, have had a loved one to go to heaven, we've had, we've had many of the adults that have passed on, some spouses that have passed on, some children that have passed on. Hey, if you reflect on that situation without the revelation of God's word and without the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have nothing left but despair. But when we reflect on this situation in light of his revelation, in fact of his resurrection, ah! Sorry, that was about the craziest amen I've ever done. But it's simply saying this, it'll be just like Jesus said. We'll find it even so. I'll see my loved ones again. You'll see your loved ones again. We'll see the members of this church again that have been washed by the blood and redeemed by the lamb and, and, and called up unto heaven because their time on earth was done. We'll find it even so. But the same Savior who preached about heaven also preached about hell. And those who die without him find it even so. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. In fact, Jesus preached often about hell. Rich man, Lazarus. And he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, in literal flames. He found it even so. In fact, the rich man said, send, send somebody to tell my brothers. What did he say? They got the revelation of the word of God. You see, God's word is sufficient, friend. But we ought to take this into account 
that since Jesus rose again from the grave and he prophesied that, he predicted that, and it happened, then what he has said about hell is also true. And what he said about the coming wrath is also true. Which means this, we better be busy. But praise God also what he said about the second coming is also true. Now listen, there's so many ways you could take that here tonight. You'll find it even so. You'll find his deity just like he said it was. you find the church just like Jesus said it was. you find the Bible just like Jesus said it was, the word of God. You'll find marriage just like Jesus said it was. You can take it. You can count your life on it. You'll find gender just like Jesus said it was. Male and female created he them. That's what he said. You say, yeah, but you know, nowadays, I mean, you know, there's all this, all this discussion about gender and gender is rather fluid. Jesus didn't say it was fluid. Yeah, but all the other into people, all the other people that, you know, I mean, they say that it's, you know, you just kind of figure out which one you want to be in that, or what you want to be and you can change it any day you want to. Okay, here's the criteria to be able to say something like that. You got to predict your own death. You got to be buried and you got to rise again when you say so. Now, if you got that kind of authority, go ahead and make those kind of statements. But until then, and you're not, then I'm going to listen to the one who said, I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to listen to the one who said, all authority, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. I'm going to listen to him because he knows. Well, this solves a lot of things. It really does. He gave us proof. It helps us when we come to the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, which certainly means this. I really do need to be paying attention when I come to church. I really do need to be paying attention when I read my Bible because what He said is true and it applies to me. The revelation of God will give you rest if you'll rest in it. It'll give you rest if you'll rest in it. I remember being at, and I'll conclude with this, I remember being at, at Sagmont and First time I went down the zip line at Sagmont, Camp Sagmont, got a zip line. Hey, come on. And uh, Brother Chad Lee Master, pretty stout guy, if you know Pastor Lee Master. He went down that zip line first, and, and he told me this. He said, man, Brother Gaddis, when you get in that harness, you just trust the harness. The harness will take care of you, Okay. They got this rope that's like a guiding rope. You're, you're on the cliff and you float over Brother Seth, uh, floating over the lagoon there and, and uh, hanging on for, you know, dear life. Really, you don't even have to hang on because you're in the harness. But Brother Lee Master said, you know, when I, when I first did that, you know, you jump off. And he said, I was holding myself up with my arms. Man, I got tired. Arms got to shaking. And he just had to come into the harness. And he said this. He said, you know, actually, once I just settled into that harness... That was a great ride. I had to trust it. So I thought, you know, if he with such muscular arms was not able to hold himself up the whole time, how much less will I? <laughs> Come on. That's what you were thinking. So I just, listen, I just took him at his word. And instead of trying to hold myself up all the way down, I just let that rope kind of go in front of me, just kind of held on to it. And I just rested in the harness and it took care of me. Look, there's a couple of ways you can go through life as a believer even. Huh? Your effort holding on or you can trust the harness of God's word. And the revelation of God will give you rest if you'll rest in it. As he said, as he said, as he said, and they remembered. Isn't that good? as he said.